Hey everybody, let's graph some nonlinear functions. Those of you that can graph these nonlinear functions are going to do way better on the test, this first module test, than those who can't get this figured out. So here's some additional practice. All right, number one says, what is the slope and the y-intercept, then graph the equation. Well, this equation is written in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. Your slope is 3 fourths and your y-intercept is negative 2. This is a linear equation because you have an x and a y and they're both being raised to the first power. It will graph as a straight line. Now, if you want to make a table of values because you can't remember how to graph slope-intercept form, the thing I want you to notice about the graph, you're going to pick your x's and solve for y. You, all of the graphs we're going to give you go from an x value of negative 10, negative 9, negative 8, negative 7, negative 6, negative 5, negative 4, all the way up to a positive 10. So you could go negative 10 all the way down to positive 10, pick all of those x values in between, plug them in, solve for y. Generally, if you pick, you know, somewhere from negative 5 to positive 5, you're good. On some of these other graphs, you might have to go negative 6 to positive 6, maybe out to 7s. Anyway, on these, for most of these, I'm going to go negative 5 to positive 5. I always like to start with an x value of 0, because when you plug in 0, the math is easy. 3 fourths times 0 is 0, and 0 subtract 2 is negative 2. So there's our first point. That's 0, negative 2. Um, let's plug in a 4. You don't have to go in order on the... This is linear, okay? These are linear. Your first two examples are linear. Then we'll get to the nonlinear. When you do the nonlinears, I don't want you to skip around like this. Anyway, I picked 4 because 3 divided by 4 multiplied by 4. Divide by 4, multiply by 4, cancel each other out, and you're left with 3 minus 2 equals 1. Oh, and let's do negative 4. Dividing by 4 and multiplying by negative 4 leaves you with just negative 1. That's negative 3 minus 2, negative 5. Okay, you got a straight line. You could have graphed using your slope and your y-intercept. First thing you do is graph your y-intercept of negative 2, and then rise 4 and run 3. Up 1, 2, 3, run 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, one more linear. This one, this uh, linear equation, I know it's linear because the x and the y are being raised to the first power. It will graph as a straight line. Uh, I'm going to, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph using my intercepts. That, and that's really the only thing I use this form, this is standard form of a linear equation. It's really the only thing I really use it for is to graph your intercepts. Now what's always true of your y-intercept? x equals 0. If you plug in 0 for x, this first term disappears. Negative 3, y, negative 3 times y equals 15 or y equals, oh you can't see it. It says y equals negative 5. So we can graph 0, comma, negative 5. That's right there. And now I'm going to do my x-intercept. What's always true of an x-intercept? Your y value is 0. So if you plug that in, this drops out. You're left with 5x equals 15. When you solve for x, x is 15 divided by 5, which is 3. So. 3 comma 0 is your x-intercept. And you can connect, you know, connect the dots right there. It's always nice to do one more point because then that makes sure you did your math correct. Okay? So that was graphing linear functions. Let's go on to nonlinear. Oh, I was going to say, if you want to convert this to slope-intercept, here's your... Here is your y-intercept at negative 5, and you're going to rise up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and run 1, 2, 3. So you could have done it that way. That's what I would have done. I would have just graphed in slope-intercept form. 
Okay, here is our first nonlinear. We're going to do two, two of these absolute value functions. We'll do two square root functions, and we'll do two quadratics, and then I think there's a couple extra graphs maybe. Anyway, this is an absolute value function. It's got an absolute value in it, and I'm going to tell you that all absolute value functions graph as a V-shape. It's going to be a V-shape. All right, so I really don't know where to start. The most important thing to find with an absolute value function, if it makes a V-shape, you've got to find the vertex. If you don't find the vertex and you only pick points that graph like that, you'll make the mistake a lot of other people before you did. They'll graph it as a linear function. This is not linear. All right, so let's pick some values. I'm going to start here at 0. I'm going to plug in 0. Absolute value of 0. Absolute value is distance from 0, and distance is always positive. So the absolute value makes the number positive. 0 plus 3 is 3. So 0, 3. I'm going to pick 1. Put in 1, the absolute value of 1 is 1, 1 plus 3 is 4. Graph it, keep going. Absolute value of 2 is 2, plus 3 is 5. And this is going to keep going on, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to keep going on in that direction. And that's why a lot of people will graph this as a straight line, because they don't like to choose negative x values. But I want you to choose negative x values. The other thing I don't want you to do is to draw your line until all your points are plotted. Draw your line at the end. Let's put in negative 1. The absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1, and positive 1 plus 3 is 4. Ah, see what's happening here? If I put in negative 2, the absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. Positive 2 plus 3 is 5. Now you can see what's happening. With an absolute value function, you always see symmetry. If this right here is the line of symmetry, which goes through the vertex, I want to show you. This point is 1 to the right of the y-axis, or the axis of symmetry. This is 1 to the left. This point is 2 to the right of the axis of symmetry. This one's 2 to the left. And you can see that in your chart. If you have consecutive x values, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, they're consecutive. Here's your vertex. And these reflect across the vertex. Do you see that? Yeah, so that way you know you've done it right. Okay, but you've got to be, you've got to write your x values in consecutive order plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, to see this kind of reflection in your table, the symmetry in your table. Okay, I also want to tell you that this plus 3 right here at the end, that's not inside the absolute value bars, that made the parent function, which usually starts at the origin, that made it shift up 3. Yeah. Anyway, you don't need to know that at this point, but... It's interesting. So we do have that V-shape. Let's do this absolute value function. We know it's an absolute value function because I see the absolute value bars. We know it's supposed to graph as a V-shape. I don't know what X values to pick, so I'm going to go negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, all the way to positive 5. And I always tend to start at 0. So plug in 0. This time the number is inside the absolute value bars. So you've got to take your x and add 4 to it and then take the absolute value. Absolute value of 4 is 4. So 0, 4. If I put in a 1, 1 plus 4 is 5. The absolute value of 5 is 5. Put in a 2. The absolute value of 2 plus 4, that's the absolute value of 6, which is 6. And that's going to keep going. Okay, I'm going to go backwards now. Don't connect the dots yet. Let's put in a negative 1. 
negative 1 plus 4 is 3, and the absolute value of 3 is 3. So negative 1 comma 3. Keep going. You know it's V-shaped, and we have not found that vertex yet. A lot of people just give up at this point, and they're like, eh, there we go. This is not a linear function. It's not going to graph as a straight line. Keep going. Put in negative 2. Negative 2 plus 4 is 2, and the absolute value of 2 is 2. So negative 2, 2. Keep going. Absolute value of 1 is 1, so negative 3 comma 1. Keep going. Put in a, a negative 4. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. Absolute value of 0, 0. Keep going. Put in a negative 5. Here, negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. The absolute value of negative 1 is what? A positive 1. We found our vertex. Now, I would put in 6 and 7. The absolute value of negative 6 plus 4 is the absolute value of negative 2, which is positive 2. So negative 6 comma 2 graphs right here. If you put in a 7, negative 7 plus 4, absolute value of negative 3, which is positive 3, right there. And we have our V-shape. Okay, I know that this point right here, four, negative 4 comma 0 is my vertex. If I had continued to negative 6 and negative 7, once again, we would have seen this uh, kind of symmetry across the vertex in the table. And you know you've done it right. Okay, let's do a quadratic. This is a quadratic equation. It's quadratic because it's being raised to the second power. So let's build our table. Go from negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2. I don't know, I'm going to start at negative, I don't know why I picked negative 1. Pop in negative 1. What's negative 1 minus 3? Yeah, that's negative 4. Negative 4 squared is negative 4 times negative 4. That's positive 16. Well, positive 16 does not fit on my graph because my y values only go up to 10. So, I mean, if my graph went out to 20, it fit, but it won't fit on this one. So let's try 0. Put in a 0. 0 minus 3 is, you know what I just noticed? This is missing a squaring sign. 0 minus 3 is negative 3, and negative 3 squared is negative 3 times negative 3, positive 9. There is our first point. Okay? I'll bet the rest of these forgot the squaring also. Uh, let's see here. No, that one has it. I'm going to pop in 1. x is 1. So 1 minus 3, do the math first. That's negative 2. Negative 2 squared is negative 2 times negative 2. That's positive 4. Graph that point. Put in a 2. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. So 2 comma 1. It's kind of starting to curve. Put in 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. 0 squared is 0, so 3 comma 0. It really is starting to curve. Keep going. Put in a 4 for x. 4 minus 3 is 1. 1 squared is 1. There we go. Now we're starting to see the shape. Put in your last number. 5 minus 3 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. I think I'm putting one more number, 6. 6 minus 3 is 3, and 3 squared is 9. There we go. Anytime you graph a quadratic, something being raised to the second power, you get this kind of U shape. And this curve is called a parabola. It's also symmetrical, just like our absolute value functions. Your line of symmetry runs through the vertex. See this point that's one unit to the right of the axis of symmetry? That's one to the left. Here's two to the right. Here's two to the left. Here's three to the right. Here's three to the left. That's how you know you did it right. Do you see the symmetry in the table? Okay. 
Here's my vertex right here. That's my vertex. You can see the symmetry across the vertex here in the table. Okay? That's how you know you did it right. Okay, let's try this one. Fill in the table with at least five points, then graph the equation. f of x equals x squared minus 4. This time the minus 4, the number is outside the, the parentheses, not inside. It is quadratic because of the x squared, so I'm expecting a parabola. I'm looking for that U shape. Let's build our table. Enter all of our numbers in order from negative 5 up to positive 5. Let's start popping in some numbers. We'll start with negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. 16 minus 4 is 12. 12 doesn't fit on our graph. Negative 4, comma. I mean, if it was paper, I'd probably put a dot up there. Let's try negative 3. Let's put in negative 3. This is negative 3 times negative 3. If you enter this in your calculator as negative 3 squared and you don't have parentheses, you're going to get the wrong answer. You're going to get negative 9 minus, 14, uh, minus 4, which is negative 13. But this is positive 9 minus 4, which is 5. So be careful. Okay, negative 3 comma 5, we've got that graphed. Let's put in a negative 2. That's 4 minus 4, which is 0. Okay. Let's put in the next one. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. 1 subtract 4 is negative 3. So negative 1, negative 3. Starting to see a curve. Put in 0. We get negative 4. 0 comma negative 4. Put in a 1. 1 squared is 1. 1 subtract 4 is negative 3. Look what it's doing. I think we found our vertex. Keep going. Now let's do one more. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 subtract 4 is 5. There is our parabola. Of course, this one doesn't fit on the graph. But connect your dots with as smooth of a curve as you possibly can do. Your parabolas are symmetrical. Here's my axis of symmetry. It passes through the vertex. That points 1 to the right, 1 to the left. 2 to the right, 2 to the left, 3 to the right, 3 to the left. If that's not happening, you've made a math error. You can also see, let's see, this is our vertex right here. Do you see the symmetry? See how those y values repeat? That's how you know you did it right. Okay. Now let's try a square root function. Here's a square root. So f of x is the square root of x plus 4, where the plus 4 is, is part of the radicand, the number under the radical sign. These shapes I'm going to call an, an eyebrow shape. And you'll see in a minute when we graph this. I don't know where to start, so let's go negative 5 to positive 5 in our xy table. If you put negative 5 in, Negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. When you punch a square root of negative 1 in your calculator, you're going to get an error because it's looking for a number that when it's multiplied by itself, it gives you negative 1. And numbers multiplied by itself are always positive. Okay? You cannot multiply two numbers together and get negative 1. All right, let's put in negative 4. Square root of 0 is 0. Use your calculator. There's our first point. Let's put in negative 3. Negative 3 plus 4 is 1. The square root of 1 is 1. Now go ahead and put in some of these other numbers. You can graph them in, even if they're decimals. That gives us the square root of 2. And the square root of 2 is, I'm just going to round it to the tenths place, 1.4. You can graph that just a little bit past 1. If you put in negative 1, negative 1 plus 4 is 3. Square root of 3 is 1.7. And we can graph that. Pop in a 0. 0 plus 4 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. Okay? I'm going to jump all the way down here to 5. 
I'll bet you can figure out why I skipped all these others and jumped to 5. 5 plus 4 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. Yeah, it gives me a pretty answer. And just because I skipped all of these doesn't mean they don't exist. That's why I'm going to connect all the dots with a smooth curve. Okay? Now, if you were asked to give the domain and range of this function, let's talk about that. The domain are all of your x values. I start from the left and I go to the right. I take my pencil and I, I, I hold it vertical, but I move my pen or my pencil, and it doesn't touch the graph here to, until I reach an x value of negative 4. And it includes negative 4. And if I keep moving my pencil to the right, the last thing I touch on the curve is an arrowhead. That means it keeps going on forever in the positive direction. Range. Range seems to mess a lot of people up. I guess because they want to think top down. But here you have to go bottom up because this has to be the smallest number followed by the largest number. So here in our range, go bottoms up. I don't touch the curve until I get to a y value. These are x values. These are y. Until I get to a y value of what? Yeah, that's 0. And it includes 0. And then my y values keep increasing in the curve. See all these y values here? And it keeps going on forever. Positive infinity. Okay? You would do the same thing with your parabolas. You do it the same way. And your absolute value functions. All right, let's try this one. Absolute value of x. The plus 4 this time is on the outside of the radical sign. I'm still expecting an eyebrow shape. Let's see what we get this time. You put in a 5. Well, you put in the absolute value of negative 5 and you're going to get an error. Error, because you can't take the square root of a negative number. We really could have skipped all of these. You don't get your first point until you get here. Absolute or the square root of 0 is 0 plus 4 is 4. So 0 comma 4 is our first point. Put in a 1. Square root of 1 is 1. 1 plus 4 is 5. Put in a 2. Square root of 2 is 1.4. It's a number. You can graph it. 1.4 plus 4 is 5.4. So 2 comma 5.4 is right there. Put in a 3. Square root of 3 is 1.7. 1 1.7 1 .7 plus 4 is 5.7. And you can graph it. Put in a 4. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 plus 4 is 6. So 4 comma 6 right there. And do you see how I skipped all the way down to 9? Because the square root of 9 is 3. It comes out to be a pretty number. 3 plus 4 is 7. So 9 comma 7. Connect it with a smooth curve. Can you do the domain and range? Domain are your x values. I don't touch the curve until I get to an x value of what? Yep, 0, it includes 0. And it goes on forever, I know because of that arrowhead, in a positive infinity direction. What's your range? y values, I'm going to go bottoms up, and I don't touch the curve until I get to a y value of 4. It includes 4, but it continues to go up. I hit that arrowhead, positive infinity. Okay. Let's see what else I've got. Well, that's it. That is the end of our practice. I hope this helps you. You need the practice because you want to get an A on this first test. And with those nonlinears, it just takes practice. All right, so good luck, guys.